אחת, שתיים, שלוש, אחר הצהריים טובים. Uh, good afternoon. How's it going? Uh, knock knock. Uh, may I have uh, everybody's attention, please, for one minute? I don't mind if you play with your phones or laptops or anything throughout this whole session. I really, really honestly don't mind. But if you're here in this room, could you please um, look up at the screen uh, just for a few seconds? Uh, if you remember this little thing that most people don't know English, if, that's, if this is the only thing you remember from this whole talk, I'll be happy. This is the most important thing you need to remember. Um, so, please raise your hand if English is the only language that you know. Not so many of you. Uh, nice. Okay, is there anybody who knows more than two languages, including English? More than two languages, including English. Cool. This is, this is, this is fun. Thank you. This is fun because people often ask me, how many languages do you speak? And I hate it because I speak three and like another one not so well. So I, I'm not any better than most of you. So, um, a Wikipedia article. Can I, uh, who can tell me what's the problem with this Wikipedia article? What's the problem, what's the problem with this Wikipedia article? What's, what's that? Heteronormative. Um, nice. Uh, this Wikipedia article is fake. Uh, that's not what Wikipedia says. I faked it. Um, this is what Wikipedia actually says, the English Wikipedia this morning. Um, uh, so this is fake. However, um, can anybody think of, uh, I'll, I'll give you like five seconds to, you know what, ten seconds to think of other problems that you see in this article. Okay, wedding bands, what else? A really complex sentence, okay, what else? I love this comment. The, the languages are hidden behind the button there, uh, and lots of people don't know that they're hidden there. I love that comment. Uh, anything else? Wedlock. There's, there's a wonderful podcast called The History of English Language. It, it, it has like a whole episode about the word wedlock. Um, okay, so let me give you a hint. Uh, does anybody know this language by any chance? Do you know this? <laughs> Uh, this is Odia. Uh, it's a language of uh, Eastern India. Um, for anybody who knows Odia, but not English, the article in English is useless. Uh, that's a problem. And th that's a problem that you don't even notice if you know English, whether as a first or as, or as a second language. Uh, if you know Odia, then you're lucky. You have an article about uh, uh, marriage. Um, this article is available, uh, last time I checked, in something like 140 languages. Uh, this means that there are uh, lots of languages in which this article is not available. So, uh, it's a thing to remember. Uh, when I was preparing this talk, I found that in the Bavarian language, marriage is a... Uh, is there anybody here? <laughs> like, seriously, this is the Bavarian language, spoken, <laughs> spoken, spoken in uh, southern Germany. Okay, I like it's, it's, it may be not the best joke, but, but that's actually the word for marriage in Bavarian. Eh? Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree that that's not, that's not true, but this is the actual word. It's in, in, in standard German, it's something like eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so. Knowing English is a kind of privilege. Uh, it's, it's a thing that you don't even, it's a thing that you don't even notice when you know, uh, when you know English. You don't notice how many things do you have that people who don't know English don't have. And I should remind you that most people don't know English. Um, so I'll give you some examples. It's a very scattered thing. There are many, many, many more things uh, that you're lucky to have if you know English that I will not mention in the stock. I don't have, uh, I don't know all of them and I am not, uh, like I don't have the time here. But let's give you some uh, simple ones. Um, a keyboard. Any computer or phone or any kind of device uh, has an English keyboard, uh, always, like without any exception. Um, 
there is no other language uh, in top uh, 50 or so languages of the world, uh, except Indonesian, which, uh, uh, for which this is true. Even for big languages of Western Europe, like uh, uh, French and German, they have some extra letters that you cannot type on standard English keyboard unless uh, you have the proper software installed. And you cannot trust that any computer that you use will have this software installed. Not to mention uh, languages uh, that are written in the Cyrillic alphabet, or Hebrew, or Arabic, or Japanese, and so on. Uh, you, on, on, on a lot of modern computers and phones, you can install, you can enable the, the typing support in your language, but it's, it's not always available out of the box. If you speak English, you have it out of the box. The only language that has this uh, out of the bigger languages of the world is Indonesian. Um, another example. Um, fonts. Um, again, the basic Latin alphabet is available absolutely everywhere without any exception. Uh, this is uh, not quite true for uh, a lot of other languages. Uh, there are some simpler problems, there are some harder problems. So, for example, um, let me give you an example of a simpler problem. This is our colleague Bartosz. Uh, I took this picture this uh, morning, and uh, if you notice, uh, his name tag is broken terribly, and Theoretically, this shouldn't happen in 2018 because Unicode technology, which allows letters in any language to be written on any computer, should be ubiquitous by now. Apparently, it isn't. Uh, I've been seeing problems with name tags in conferences, like in almost every conference. Uh, this, is, this is pretty terrible. Um, Bartosz, did I, did I write the Polish part correctly? Thank you. Um, so, and this is, this is really one of the smallest problems with, with fonts that can happen with fonts. It, it can be even worse. It, it, it still happens quite often that you cannot read, not to mention write, you cannot read anything in your language at all. In quite a lot of languages uh, of the world, uh, the Odia language, which I showed earlier with the, with the, with the marriage, quite a lot of devices, uh, millions of devices that are used around the world, they cannot display that language at all. They will just display meaningless squares. Um, now, something uh, slightly um, less obvious, morphology. English happens to have very, very, very simple morphology. Morphology is how words change. So, uh, in English, you have the plural, which adds the S in the end of the word. You have the past tense, which adds ED. Uh, you have the gerund, which has, adds ING, and that's about it. Like, words change very, very rarely uh, in English. In the Merriam-Webster dictionary, uh, it, it lists all the, all the forms of the all, all the forms uh, of all the words because it has room for them. There are so few of them; words hardly ever change. In uh, Russian, for example, uh, you have uh, six uh, different cases, so every noun can have six different forms in singular and six more forms in plural. Uh, Russian is a relatively simple example. In Finnish, it's something like fifteen. Uh, and uh, there are languages uh, that are even far more complicated. What does this mean? This means that uh, s it's much harder for search engines to support uh, languages other than English, a lot of them. There are, there are other languages that, are that also happen to be s simple as English, but most languages are not. Most languages have very complicated uh, morphology, complicated uh, grammar, complicated um, uh, declension. Um, search engines can be made to support them, is, is Trey here by any chance? No. So Trey uh, is working on uh, improving morphology support for different languages in Wikipedia's uh, search engine, but it requires particular work for each and every language. And uh, again, as you possibly know, there are thousands of languages in the world. Um, English happens to be lucky uh, with uh, very simple support for uh, search engines. Uh, spell checking. So this is a funny thing. Uh, a few years ago, uh, I noticed that f the spell checker in Firefox marks a certain word uh, as incorrect, and I was sure that that word is correct. So I reported the bug, that bug was rejected. They told me that the word is in the spelling dictionary, but the one that is shipped with Firefox intentionally omits it. They cut off the dictionary after something like 80,000 words, because then it would be too big. Um, that's the problem that English has. The dictionary is too big. Uh, there are too many, uh, for Firefox at least, too many texts collected. The, the, the spell checker is so great that they have to make it smaller. Um, 
a lot of languages don't have a spelling dictionary at all, like like nothing. Like you 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 will in English you're lucky you will see like wrong words marked in red. In a lot of languages you don't have this. In some languages uh, they were important enough uh, for commercial purposes that uh, uh, Microsoft or some other companies developed uh, uh, spelling dictionaries for them. Certainly for German and French and the Russian and a bunch of others. For some languages, they were very lucky to have volunteers who developed spelling dictionaries. For my language, for Hebrew, there were two brilliant students. They were actually mathematicians and not linguists, but they developed a spelling dictionary for Hebrew, so thanks, thanks to them, and they are lovely open source people. For a lot of languages, they don't have such amazing volunteers, uh, and they don't have uh, uh, any commercial support that, uh, that would justify commercially developing a, a, a spelling dictionary. So. Uh, Feel lucky for that. Uh, something that is similar to spelling dictionary. Uh, more than 20 years ago, I started using Microsoft Word, and Microsoft Word already back then in 1997, I think, uh, it already came not only with spell checking but also with style checking. So it suggested uh, correcting king to monarch. Um, English has this. Most languages don't have anything like that. So English is very advanced. Uh, in, in English, there's big demand for this kind of style checking in a lot of languages don't have this. Uh, another thing about gender, uh, so English hardly has any gender except pronouns. Even on your name tags today, you can write your pronouns because this is so important these days, uh, which makes a lot of sense. But if you think about this, uh, you hardly ever need this in software. You, you, don't, um, you don't often say he or she in software. And when you do need to say he or she in software, People these days usually remember to use they instead, but in a lot of in a lot of other languages you do have to say this. In uh, in English, verbs are the same for men and women. In a lot of languages, they are not. In Arabic and Hebrew and in Russian and Polish and a lot of other languages, verbs are different. So if somebody, if on Twitter, for example, uh, you say Jane retweeted this or Mike retweeted this, in a lot of languages the word retweeted would be different, but Twitter doesn't allow this. It's, it's very popular on Twitter, on Twitter th these days to say uh, what are your pronouns in, in your profile, but this is not reflected in software. You just have to somehow manually do this. In, in English, you don't care. In a lot of other languages, you have to. Um, uh, trademarks, uh, can anybody read what this says? <laughs> Asaf? Um, so uh, I, I, did a, I did a little reversal here and um, what happens very frequently in uh, a lot of uh, advertising uh, instructions, uh, you know, user manuals of things, the, the, the text is written in some other language, not English, but the name of the product appears in English because uh, marketing people insist on the trademark to write it as it is. Now, if the language is written in the Latin alphabet, it's not so bad. Sometimes it is bad. Sometimes they, like, they insist on not only using the original name, but not even declining it, which, which sometimes can be very ugly. If the language uses a different alphabet, then you suddenly have something in the Latin alphabet in the middle of a different thing. And I shall remind you that n not all people know the Latin alphabet. I don't know if it's most, but a lot of people don't know the Latin alphabet, as, as strange as it may sound. Uh, in case you wondered, this is a Hebrew name of an uh, artificial sweetener. But that, that's, that's how it looks if you, if you would use, like, if you write something in Hebrew and then uh, an English name in the middle. Uh, by the way, some companies, they are pretty okay. Like Coca-Cola, they are fine with writing Coca-Cola in, in Hebrew or whatever language. They, they translate it to all the languages. Uh, Microsoft are also pretty okay. Mozilla Firefox, for some reason, they insist on writing Mozilla Firefox always in English. I, I hate it. Even though I, I love Mozilla, I hate this part. Um, <laughs> This is kind of obvious, but if you know English, then you can speak to people who only know English. But then you get this weird reversal. Uh, for example, uh, people go to India, uh, people who speak English go to India, and then in India they s speak to people who know English because they cannot speak to people who don't know English. Uh, this creates a wrong impression that everybody in India knows English. Um, and India is just one example. It, it could be any other country. Um, 
because of that, you don't get to speak, you don't get to, speak to people who don't know English because you don't know English yourself. Um, if you are such a person, if, you, uh, if, you, if your native language is something else and you know English, when you speak to other people, try to remember that some of the people who know your, know your language, they don't know English. Uh, try to remember them, try to represent them. Uh, it's, it's the best I can suggest. It's, once you do know English, it's very hard to see this, but try to. Um, a little more about software. Uh, a lot of software begins in English. Very often, it's not translated at all. Uh, Instagram, until recently, was not translated to any language, uh, which is really crazy because Instagram is so popular, but until recently, it was not translated to any language. Only recently, they started translating. Twitter uh, was online since, uh, I think, 2006 or so. Uh, they only started translating in 2012. Uh, a lot of websites still don't translate anything at all. Uh, so if you speak English, you're lucky because you can use almost any website, uh, almost any new service, almost any new app, uh, and a lot of people cannot. Uh, some uh, more detailed example of that, error messages, bugs, stuff like that. Um, if software is translated, you see the error message uh, translated, uh, which may be useful for you if you know what to do, but sometimes the error message by itself is not useful, is not helpful. You still need support from a support person. If that support person happens to know your language, you're lucky. Uh, but sometimes you have to Google it, for example. If you Google the error message in your language, maybe Google will find something, maybe not. Uh, in bigger languages, you may be luckier. Uh, in Russian, you may be lucky. In German, you may be lucky. In Japanese, you may be lucky. Uh, in Hebrew, I'm not sure. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. Um, now, this is fun. Uh, this is the New York Times app uh, from this morning. Uh, New York Times, by definition, has all of its content in English. Uh, I, I hope that this is clear. Okay, This is an English language newspaper. But I took the screenshot on my phone. My phone is set to use Hebrew as uh, the user interface language, and you can see here that there's some weird cutoff on, on the left. That's, that's how I see the New York Times app. Uh, the New York Times app, uh, without any good reason, tries to adapt itself to my phone uh, and flip itself from, from right to left, or something like that, it's really weird. That's how it is supposed to look. Uh, uh, when the phone is set to English. You can also notice that the menu on the top, the top story is most popular, it's, it's flipped. It's, it's, actually, it's actually one of the most common bugs uh, in the last couple of years with the support for right to left languages. Content that is supposed to be English, but it's broken because I want to read this in English and other things in other languages. The Pinterest app, used to be broken like this, it was almost completely unusable. Um, uh, and you may remember our colleague, uh, Stephen Walling. He, he's now a product manager in Pinterest. I emailed him and they fixed it in Pinterest. <laughs> um, but a lot of apps are broken. New York Times, like it's a very famous, important app, broken. Uh, now, obviously, just, you know, I, I should mention this, we are all Wikipedia people, but yeah. Uh, if you know English, you get more Wikipedia articles. Uh, but let's um, uh, see uh, about uh, lots of other right-to-left problems. That's a real website. Our colleague Moriel made it. It's, it's a brilliant website. Please take a look at it. Emoji is broken. Damn it. I, I, actually, I, actually have, I, actually have a, I actually have a theory that... Uh, uh, emoji, um, emoji is occasionally broken, not always seen, uh, on, not on all phones. It kind of shows people in the West who use emoji, how, how does it look when a font is not available for your language. That was supposed to be a, 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 a yoga emoji. Never mind. Um, if you want to use emoji, it's like, it's not the most important example, but emoji is fun. If you want to use emoji, if you want to type emoji on your phone, uh, there are many hundreds of different emojis. You, you need to search for them by name. And uh, they are indexed by their English name. If you want to search for them in your other language, 
You cannot. You have to search in English. If you don't know English, you're screwed. Uh, it's, it's fixable because theoretically it's possible to translate names of emoji to different languages, but it has not really been done yet. Um, another thing that is pretty important for software, uh, binary logic. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, things in software are like uh, right and wrong, uh, opposites. Uh, in English, it's very hard to, uh, very easy, I'm sorry, to form words like this. Uh, opposite words. It's not as easy in, in other languages. It may seem, why wouldn't it be easy? So in English it's easy. Um, in uh, Hebrew, for example, it's very hard. In Russian it's very hard. Um, when, I have to, when I have to translate uh, Wikipedia, new features of, of uh, Wikipedia software, uh, I always struggle with these. I, I have to use different words, I have to like rewrite the whole sentence to make it opposite and so on. Uh, complicated. Is anybody familiar with this term? Just in case you, you are not familiar with this, um, uh, take a look, it's a pretty, it's a pretty famous one. Um, because English has this uh, fun morphology where words themselves hardly ever change, it's very easy to, it's very easy to turn uh, uh, a word from a noun to an adjective to a verb uh, and vice versa. Uh, and then it gets to a very curious situation where a word used in the computer user interface, what, what is it actually? Is it a noun? Is it a verb? Is it some kind of a, does it communicate some kind of a abstract idea that is like goes even beyond usual grammar? In English it's very easy. Uh, like, like is a very, very famous ubiquitous uh, button in Facebook. What, what is it? Is it a button? Is it like? Is it something iconic, which is like went beyond uh, the usual constraints of grammar? What happens when you need to translate this? Uh, when you need to translate this, uh, how do you translate this to Hebrew? For for years, the translation to Hebrew was a uh, hafti, which means uh, I liked it. Literally, it means I liked it. It's also a pretty. It's also a pretty common word when you know in, in, in colloquial language. It was a very good translation. The problem is uh, when Facebook uh, added a year or two ago uh, the new buttons for like different emotions, one of them was love, uh, which was uh, the same word. And then you had to, then uh, people had to find a new translation to, to make them different. So they actually changed the like to like. Now, now, now it just says like in Hebrew, in Hebrew letters, but like. Um, I, I give a lot of examples from Hebrew because that's the language I know, I use most often, but it could happen in a lot of other languages. Uh, and then, you know, when you, you can speak about this not only as a verb, to like, you can speak about this as a noun, like somebody, some, somebody's post became very popular and got 2,000 likes or 20,000 likes. Uh, how, do you, how do you turn that in Hebrew, taking that translation and turning it into, into a noun would be very hard. In English, it happens to be very easy. English is lucky. So, what can you do? Any questions still here? So, I had a question, ooh, okay. Um, I had a question about the, the last example. You said 2,000 likes, and how would you translate that as a concept into another language? I'm wondering if the fact that we can say in English, I can say in English 2,000 likes is because English as a language has that flexibility or because I'm crappy at English? Like, like You are not crappy at English. <laughs> meaning like the slang in English just kind of throws out convention and doesn't really care. It's not even slang. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty usual, grammatical, acceptable English. There's, there's nothing wrong about it. Uh, yes, English just has this luck. Uh, English happens to be a language where this is possible without sounding weird. Uh, trying this, it, there may be some other languages in which it's, it is also possible. Uh, in a lot of languages, it is not possible. In a lot of languages, it would, it would just sound like literally unspeakable. People will, will just not understand this. It will sound like a non-grammatical sentence. Any, anything else before I go a little bit further? Yep. Okay. 
Okay, I should have known. Um, I just wanted, uh, if, if other people were wondering, why Indonesian? Why is Indonesian lucky? Why can you type Indonesian on any device possible? And the answer, of course, for those who don't know, is Indonesian simply doesn't use any characters not found in the standard Latin layout. It's not that anyone was considerate of the Indonesian language. It just happens to be possible to type it on an English keyboard. Yeah. So any English keyboard is ipso facto an Indonesian keyboard, just in case someone thought, oh, the Indonesians got it made. You know, no, 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 it's just that the Indonesian alphabet, it just uses the same basic 26 uh, letter alphabet as English without any diacritical marks or extra letters or anything, so you can use it, but it's just, I, I, like I went over the list of the most, the biggest languages of the world and Indonesian was the only one I could find there, which is like that. So, the emojis here are completely different. Um, so what you can do, if you know any language other than English, switch your computers and phones to that language. Please do, like, like right now. Uh, like if, if, if you speak a, a language other than English, take out your phone, go to settings, change the language of your phone um, to that language. Why? Because dog food, that was supposed to be an emoji for dog food, never mind. Dog food, is a, in case you don't know, um, is, a, is a technique in some industries where uh, this, the, the employees eat their own dog food. Um, and um, uh, employees are trying the product themselves. Uh, it's much better if you actually see it yourself, you actually depend on it yourself. Uh, you actually see all those bugs, uh, all those weird bad translations. Um, because if you don't see it, only people who don't know English will see it. But if you know English and you know another language and you see this bug, then you can report this bug uh, to the developers and they will fix it. Like I reported that bug to Pinterest and like I do with a lot of other bugs in Mozilla and Google and a lot of other things. Uh, please do this. It may make you uncomfortable. Uh, it's worth, worth it. Uh, it uh, you, you may have to suffer through weird bugs. You may have to switch to different languages to check, is it, is it broken because it's really totally broken, or is it broken because the translation to my language is broken, and so on. This will make you uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable. But try it. Please try it. It's fun. Even if you don't know another language, um, switch to another language, and then switch back. That, that will be especially fun. Um, now, uh, the next slide uh, is a little um, plug uh, for what uh, our team has been doing in the um, uh, last couple of years. Um, you may know on Wikipedia that there is a list of languages in which um, any article is available uh, in the sidebar. Uh, did everybody notice this? Just, just making sure. On the sidebar there's a list of languages. Uh, so. Until recently, uh, the, this list of languages was just a list of languages. Um, a few uh, months ago, we started uh, changing the, the design of that. Uh, the design of that list has now changed. You, you will see um, uh, in a few seconds how does it look now. It's not yet changed in English. In the English, English Wikipedia is now the only Wikipedia uh, in which uh, this is not the new design. It will be soon, but please uh, log into the English Wikipedia on your laptop and uh, enable this in the preferences, and what you will see, instead of the very, very long list of languages, you will see something like this. So, it makes it more convenient to see in how many languages is any article available. So, uh, if you see an article that is available in 200 languages, well, it's great. Uh, you can know that, well, a lot of people can read about this thing. If you see an article that is not available in any languages at all, uh, you should just, it, it just repeatedly reminds you, okay, I am lucky that I can read this article and people who don't know English cannot read this article. So uh, you're very welcome to try this and um, uh, you're very welcome to try this and I'm, I'll be happy to hear what you think about this new way of showing the languages. Tell all your friends uh, about <laughs> what I'm telling you here. Tell, like, switch your, your phone to your language and tell your friends to switch your phone to your language. Um, and tell your friends um, uh, to translate Wikipedia articles. Uh, those of you who live in San Francisco, San Francisco, 
uh, is a pretty multilingual city. Uh, I, I really hope that when you walk around San Francisco, you do notice a lot of uh, signs and warnings and advertisements and Chinese and uh, Tagalog and Spanish and uh, Vietnamese and a lot of other languages. Surely you have friends who know other languages. Speak to them. Uh, tell them that there is a Wikipedia in their language. Tell them that they can make the Wikipedia in their language uh, larger and richer and they can translate articles. Also, if you have friends who work in big tech companies like uh, Yahoo or Google or Microsoft or whatever, tell them to switch their phones to their languages. Um, I have a very curious experience repeatedly. People tell me, uh, like I, I tell them, you know Russian or Hebrew or Polish or whatever. Why do you use your phone in English? I especially do this when I, um, I especially do this when I uh, report bugs. I, I see terrible bugs in Google products, for example, or in Twitter, and um, and I wonder there are lots of people who know Hebrew uh, and work at Google. Why do I report these bugs? Why don't they see it themselves? And they tell me, uh, oh well, yeah, I I use I use it in English because it's more comfortable. What a terrible. What a terrible excuse, but even an even more terrible excuse, most of our clients speak English, so we need to test for them. But there are other people at Google who, who know only English. They surely test it uh, only in English. You can test it in other languages. So please, like it's, 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 it's a very strange conversation that I, that I have occasionally with people, but you are welcome to try this as well. It's not that hard. Uh, surely many of you have friends who work at tech companies. And this is my cat. And this cat has an important message for you. Most people don't know English. Please remember this. Uh, and I intentionally left uh, time to talk to you uh, and to discuss and to hear your opinions and questions and uh, additions and examples. Uh, thank you. Fantastic. Um, I have a fun little example. Um, I currently live in Cairo, and predominantly everyone speaks Arabic. They don't really speak English unless they're a little more like educated and you know in English language. But what I find funny is even in areas that are you know impoverished, the signs are all written in Arabic, but they are English words. Like, I had the impression that I was going to go to, you know, an Arab country and speak, learn Arabic through science, through TV shows and what have you. But I'm literally reading, like, mother care in Arabic letters. So I just, it's just dominated an arena that I just had no idea about. It's just a comment. <laughs> Um, also, just a comment, I've been traveling to Bangladesh in November and I met the Wikipedians, the Wikimedians there. And of course, I was aware that most of the people I would meet would be from the upper or upper middle class because they're the ones that have time to contribute, they're the ones, um, yeah. But then when I was there, I met some, they had very different levels of English. That was what you were talking about, we meet the people that speak English. Um, and I was meeting some of them who didn't speak English that well. And I realized when we have the international conferences, when we have the Wikimania, we usually meet also from those communities, not only those that come from educated families, um, but we even inside of them, they're the best educated. Um, and we never see part of the communities because those are the people that will not probably be able to get visa to leave the country. There are some there that don't speak English. Um, and I think it's very important that we try to reach those. Those are the people that can't participate on Meta and they will not be able to participate in the international conferences. So finding a way to get in contact with those people 
that don't know English and contribute to Wikipedia in small languages. I think that's a very important thing to think about them. Yeah, there's a, uh, there's a radical thing that I say about this every now and then. Uh, for the Wikimedia board, the Wikimedia Foundation board, there are elections every now and then. One of the requirements to become a candidate is to know English. So um, I can totally understand how it will be practically hard to communicate with other board members if you don't know English, but somehow, somewhere, it must be acknowledged that if you don't allow people to run, if they don't know English, uh, then most people uh, are not represented on the board. Uh, that, that's a problem that needs to be at least acknowledged. And uh, pe people tell me, no, no, it's impractical, it's, it's radical, you, ca you cannot even mention this. But I keep mentioning this. Uh, thank you. I, I think reality is radical, so it's appropriate to say radical things. Um, I wanted to uh, add something that I think you haven't emphasized enough in your talk. Um, the vast majority of people on the planet do not speak English. I don't know if you caught that from the talk. They do not. I travel a lot. I meet with people in many countries, and I can confirm this. Lots and lots of people don't speak English. And maybe some of you are imagining, well, you know, maybe like a subsistence farmer in India doesn't speak a word of English, but you know what? He's probably not reading Wikipedia either because he's too busy surviving and stuff. And even if that's true, those are not the only people who don't speak English. You see people who are educated, who are successful, and do not speak a word of English, either because they don't need to and they get by without it, uh, with all the disadvantages that Amir mentioned, or because they, for whatever reason, couldn't pick it up. I saw a Turkish engineer in Ankara with a, with a master's degree who could not respond with yes or no or tell me the time in English, could not understand what I was saying at all. And I have a lot of experience talking to people with low English skills. This guy had none, and he was an engineer with a, with a master's degree somehow. Uh, in Korea, uh, an affluent, westernized country these days. In Seoul, in Korea, I met academics at a research institute, PhD at least, who understood English. They were able to follow my presentation and they're probably able to read articles in English, but could not utter a phrase in English, couldn't utter a single sentence in English. So it's not just, you know, the poorest of the poor, it's not just rural people in villages it really is the majority of the planet. Hello. Um, I'm sure many others will share anecdotes. Um, I cannot go and change Google or Facebook, but I want Wikipedia to change, and that's something we can do. There are a lot of things that are broken in the Wikimedia projects itself. And a lot of bugs have been filed and sleeping for years. And uh, to be fair, we are not adequately resourced to fix that. A simple example is uh, wikipedia.org. You visit that from India. It shows the top 10 Indian languages. And uh, no one can understand how to find the Marathi Wikipedia or Hindi Wikipedia. In fact, my colleague uh, shared an experience, horrible experience, that they had to go through 14 steps to find Marathi Wikipedia. And you go to Marathi Wikipedia, you cannot, if uh, there is another case, people know how to type in English, uh, even if they want to search a Marathi word, they can't type in Marathi because their phone doesn't support, or the keyboard doesn't support. The only way they can try to find an article is to type the corresponding English article. So if I type an English equivalent, I should be able to find at least the uh, local equivalent. It's not happening. It, it's the, something that can be done with Wikidata but it's not happening. And any rollout that's coming from the Wikimedia Foundation is actually English first, or sometimes only English only. And I think we should adopt a policy that it should work for all the languages from the beginning. Uh, if it doesn't work, it's actually broken. Yes. Applause. Both of these issues are known to me very well. Um, they require work. Uh, I'm really, really trying to put them on the roadmap to actually get fixed. Both of these things, I, I know very well what you're talking about. Uh, 
I'm kind of hopeful. Uh, this cannot be a commitment. This is not a commitment. I'm kind of hopeful. I'm, I'm here in, in the current annual planning for Wikimedia that we're going to invest more in language, so yay. Uh, I am hope that these two things are pretty high priority for me. I want to get both of them fixed. So yes, thank you for speaking about this. Speak about this to more people. Yeah. We only have five minutes left, so there's one I trust you. question and maybe a second one. I, I just trust you. Do, do me? Okay. Oh, here. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, just to say that um, language, as many other things, is a battlefield. Um, uh, during the Cold War, people in Cuba were studying Russian, not English. There's a reason why we need to speak English now, and English is kind of a symbol of status in many places, no? Um, you, will find, you, you won't find people hiding that speak English, but in many uh, countries in America, and when I say America, I mean from Canada to the land fire, uh, you will find people um, hiding that they speak their native languages. So, because English gives you a status and uh, access to better jobs and this kind of thing, so uh, I think fighting this is, is the most complex thing. Uh, making you understand that, yeah, knowing English gives you access to things, but keeping your language or speaking other languages is also an important asset. Yeah, just this. Yeah, you need heroes. Not, not, uh, it, it's, it's uncomfortable. You need heroes to make themselves uncomfortable. You also need glossaries to define the terms you want to translate. That would help the, the heroes to make the job. Um, I just want to comment about something as well. I spent, um, I think, about two years translating the MediaWiki um, uh, interface into my language. But when I do a global search on my user contribution, that work is not acknowledged anywhere. So it's also saying that we don't value translation uh, uh, efforts by, by um, contributors. And when you go to see other activities, I mean, this is the first thing we look at when we say, for example, select um, volunteers who will come to Wikimania or uh, look at the activities that volunteers have. And if we are not looking at activities such as Translate Wiki, then we are not encouraging them to do those translations. So that's also another structural problem that we're facing. That's, that's, besides yes, the fact, that's true. Besides the fact that um, the, most of our, our languages in Africa um, are not even properly uh, structured using the Latin alphabet, and we have even that work to do, to say, for example, how do I write the word na cha, which means I'm burning, in a Latin alphabet. It doesn't exist. So there was a workaround that was done, which I don't personally think is the right uh, way to do. But I can't even have that discussion because we're still busy trying to get my language to be recognized enough for me to do a Google search in my language. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for saying this. I, I, at, at the moment, all I can say is thank you. Uh, I, I like it's not acknowledged. I, I, agree that it could be better acknowledged. I will use the opportunity to say thank you to you and to everybody else who is here who is in, investing time in translating. Uh, yeah, we need to fix this. Uh, thank you for saying this. Uh, thank you, Amir. It's yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>